You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. Okay, we're here tonight with Danelle Jones, who has a new book out called An African in Imperial London, subtitled The Indomitable, that's a difficult word for me, The Indomitable Life of ABC Marion Merriman. Merriman Labor. Sorry. Okay, Danelle, there's your book. Thank you for coming here. <laughs> Start, uh, if you will, by telling us about yourself. What's your background? I am a writer and an English professor. And in truth, I've been thinking about, studying, and writing about British literature and history for more than 30 years. So this is something I've had a passion about for a really long time. Previous books? I wrote a fun little book called The Virginia Woolf Writer's Workshop that imagines Virginia Woolf actually teaching a class and it's drawn from her letters and diaries and novels. Um, and it also is a creative nonfiction book. Okay. And then a little book of uh, poetry also. And so lots you, of scholarly essays. Mixed so you in said that's also one. So tell us about this book. Describe what it is and, and the structure you tell it in. Yeah, so um, An African in Imperial London, The Indomitable Life of ABC Merriman Labor, is part biography, part cultural history of a man from born in Sierra Leone at the height of the British Empire. He received a typical education of a British schoolboy there. It was a British colony. In 1904, he decides to go to London, where he's going to uh, make his name, he hopes, on the greatest literary stage in the world. And so this really tells the story from 1904 to 1919, the years he lived in the big metropolis and really tried to make his life there. As a writer. As a writer. Huh. He also, um, in the meantime, goes to law school and becomes a barrister as well. He has an Afrocentric uh, import-export business. He has lots of enterprises that he starts, but his real passion was literature. And I know that uh, a large part of your interest in scholarly studies have been Virginia Woolf, and am I correct in recalling that you stumbled upon? I did. I was working on another project related to Wolf, and I was wondering, well, what Africans were sort of around at this time? And I stumbled on his book called Britons Through Negro Spectacles. And wow. it is a... Great title. Yeah. It is a <laughs> charming, witty satire of British man manners and culture. Oh, it's, really? It's, re it's a lampoon, and it got him into big trouble. We would see it very mild today, but people then really, many people were quite offended by it. Because he was African making yes, fun of them? Yes, absolutely. Not just because absolutely. they didn't want to be absolutely. correctly identified by somebody in his position. So. Well, and it's partly what you might call a reverse ethnography. So for decades, if not centuries, Europeans had been going to Africa and writing about Africans right, in right. rather stereotypical ways, right? About how they dressed and what they did and what their customs were. And there are large parts of Britain's Through Negro Spectacles where he does the exact same thing <laughs> to Londoners. Um, he's, you know, and he knows some of the things he's going to say will shock people in Africa. For example, he talks about young lovers spooning in the park, which is basically kissing, right, yeah. in the park. And so, so he um, was thought that the people that he knew in Africa would be quite shocked by some of the things that he saw in Britain. Huh. And so how long did it take to go from, this is a fascinating subject, to I think I'll write a book about him? Well, you know, I at first thought, because he and Virginia Woolf have basically, are living basically at the same time. And when he first moves to... Um, to London in 1904, he moves to Bloomsbury, and that's exactly the year that Wolf moved there. Wow. And so I thought, oh my God, I could tell these stories and I could kind of compare, because I knew pretty early on that he became a barrister, but I also knew that women at that time were not allowed to go to law school or become barristers. So I thought, oh, what was it like to be a woman? What was it like to be an African? Um, but then I just, he just took over. He basically took over, and then I really focused on his story. Okay. And did you have to do a lot of research on London of the time? I mean, it had to become a 
cultural yes, history as well? Absolutely. Um, because one of the ways that I tell his story is by really developing the whole context of how he, where he lived, how he lived, what were the things going on in London at the time. So it's very much, I, would, I often say that London is really a secondary character, is another character in this book. Okay. Well, fantastic. I have a copy, which I intend to read okay. soon. And Danelle, thank you very much. Thank you much, Ed. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. <laughs> Fun. There it is. This has been a production of This House of Books. If you'd like to be a part of the cooperative, please visit thishouseofbooks.com slash get involved.